who does work for me. He who looks upon me has his goal. He who worships me, free from attachment, who is free from enmity to all creatures, he goes to me, O Pandava, Arjun. Shri Krishna addresses Arjun as Pandava and describes how one should practice bhakti devotion. The first thing needed is makraktamkrut, do work for me. One should perform actions for the Supreme Soul. Whatever action one performs, be they yajnas, donations, austerities, or study of the Vedas, whatever actions one performs, they should perform for the Supreme Soul. The second thing needed is matparama, look at me as your goal. One should have not I have any other thoughts apart from the God and attainment of God. The ultimate goal is God, is a thought that is in the mind of the devotee. One should look at the Supreme Soul as a goal. The third thing needed is Mother Bhaktaha, worship me. One should be devoted to the Supreme Soul. Fourth is Sangha Vajita, being free from attachment. One should leave attachment. Sang means attachment. A true devotee leaves attachment. Not only that, but the fifth thing needed is Sarva Bhuteshu Nirvairaha, being free from enmity to all creatures. One who is free from the feeling of enmity or venom towards all creatures is a true devotee. Such a person goes to the Supreme Soul, and Shri Krishna says this in this verse. Such a person attains the Supreme Soul. That is why Shri Krishna says, Mam Eti, he goes to me. How many things that Shri Krishna has said in this verse? The first thing that he has said is, Mat Karmakrut, do work for me. The second thing is, Mat Paramaha, look at me as a goal. The third thing is, Mat Bhaktaha, worship me. The fourth is, Sangha Varita Jaha, being free from attachment. And fifth is, Sarva Bhuteshu Nirvairaha, being free from enmity to all creatures. One who does all five of these things attains to the Supreme Soul. In this 55th verse, the Supreme Soul has squeezed his whole teachings about who can attain him and how they can attain him. When Arjun heard this, then he must have looked, been looking at the Lord. And the question must have origin, arisen in Arjun's mind that, Lord, you are saying to do work for you, to look at you as a goal, to worship you, to be free from attachment and to be free from enmity to all creatures. But Lord, how can we become your devotees? The Lord says, it's very natural and straightforward, Arjun. Perform devotion, bhakti, and you'll become a devotee. Arjun is thinking that, Lord, this is fine. I'll tell you one thing. Until now, Arjun has been asking questions about his duty, about what he should do, how he should do it, and questions like this. He was asking such questions. After the 11th chapter, Arjun has not asked the Supreme Soul a single question about his duty. Arjun has asked questions, uh, but Arjun has not asked any questions about his duty. From now on, Arjun never asks about what he should do. He does not say this anymore. Until now, he had been asking questions such as, Tad ekam vada nishitya yena shreya aham anupyam. Tell me then decisively the one thing by which I can attain to the highest good. Arjun was clearly asking about what he should do. Now the questions that Arjun asks will not be about his duty. There is a reason for this, which is that Arjun has attained the power to decide what he should do and what he should not do. This is the consequence of having a vision of the Vishuru, the universal form. This is the Falashruti, the fruit of having a vision of the Vishuru, the universal form. Whichever person reaches a level of having a vision of the Vishuru, the universal form of God, then the person attains the qualification of knowing exactly what he should do and what he should not do in life, and knowing whether something is right and whether something is wrong. This is the power that such a person attains. Now the questions that Arjun asks are of a completely different type. Now Arjun will ask questions such that, God, you said to perform bhakti, devotion and to become a devotee, but how can one become a devotee? God says, Arjun, I will tell you in the 12th chapter.